Welcome, friends, to the second episode of Smoke Him If You Got And I am Jeremiah Charlton, the Oracle of Oxford County. And he is G.I. Alamo, the one that your mother warned you about. And this is Smoke Him If You Got Him. And we are... I'm, I'm sold on that. I'm sold on that. I like that a lot. We are doing <laughs> uh, today, listening to Tone Float is the name of the album. And the group is Organization. So look that up, folks. And uh, Mr. G. I. Alamo is going to tell you what to do. So, so here's the deal. This is uh, same as yesterday. And if you weren't here yesterday, you're just in luck because we'll tell you exactly what to do. You're going to go online, wherever you look for it, look for it, Tone Float Organization. And um, you'll listen to the side A. But before you put that needle down or before you hit play, you go and you roll one, you smoke it, you come back to we're going to talk about it. Then we'll do that again with the B-side. Come back and talk to us. That's how this works. Now, the whole point of this, folks, is to basically get you out of your normal everyday life. To get you just to listen to the music. Let the music take you someplace. Put your phone down. Stop looking at hoes on Instagram for a second Hard. and That's listen really to the music. A... I know. It's fun. But really there's more to life than that. Watch hoes? There actually is. Just... No, just not just this hour. Please, God, don't text people. Don't have other shit happening in your life. Just listen to music for an hour, and let's see what we can do with our lives. Okay. So, please do that, and uh, we'll be right back here, folks. And we're back. And we're back. That was side A. Oh, gee. Yeah. What did you think of uh, the first side? Uh, the first, uh, the first thing I got to say is I don't know how you found this, and uh, I'm super impressed. I had never heard this album. I did not look up information for the album. Um, I thought this was legitimately a Mexican San Francisco band from the Santana family. I couldn't be further from <laughs> where it should be. Um, Correct. I like that we're keeping the earthy sound. It reminded me of walking through South America looking for ayahuasca. So this is uh, from two of your favorites, Ralph Hutter and Florian Schneider. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Correct. From Kraftwerk. This is pre-Kraftwerk. This is pre-Kraftwerk. I knew the right. name of the album uh, because it's random. I knew the name of the Uh, recording it's called organization so uh, this is the most furthest thing from any of those uh any of those bands that we're talking about right now the great connie Boy, plank uh, produced this also oh i didn't know that so what year was this uh, yeah. record this was recorded in 69 came okay. out in uh june 70 are we going in uh are we going in order uh for the show because today's 1969 no no it's just it just happened to be there okay and uh folks if you want if you want an original copy of this one uh there's a guy in mexico that's got one he's selling it for 1500 euros and there's a mint copy in italy and he's selling it for 2700 euros so this is the sort of stuff that you invest in for uh to, to leave this is the good type of shit. And also, please remember who I uh, introduced you to this album. When you do get it, uh, you can get us at Smoke em If You Got Them, <laughs> dot podbean.com. So, um, to the music, side one, you said it felt like that, remind you of all those things. Thanks what what interesting to me was it, it, it started, uh, it starts with like the, the bells, yeah. right? <clears throat> the bells and the shaking and like to me that that reminds me of like art ensemble of chicago mm. right like it's like it's like a heavy vibe whenever i start hearing bells and uh like chimes yeah. to start the track off i know we're going someplace the um the bells reminded me of luke ferrari's early like tape experimentations there is actually a, a record he made called the bells where he plays with it uh with a cassette player you know with uh the actual tape he manipulates. Um, but I think you're right. Every time you hear bells, it's uh, foreboding. Something big is happening. Um, 
I do like that everything is texturized. I do like that everything has um, a place for it to exist. But it also sounds like a bunch of people just going off in the studio, right? It's a free open jam. We're following each other and building this thing. So does, is there anything like uh, that reminds you of this first track? Because uh, there's like elements of maybe like a little bit of what Miles is doing, like in a silent way, but not really. But there's like a vibe thing I'm, I'm feeling. Now that you say 19, you know, 1969, the type of music. Um, well, to be honest, it sounded like the music that we used to make a lot <laughs> when we played live. That's what it reminded me of. But what are you talking about? I'm just talking about music like before them, like like it's an in- it's an interesting um, sort of mix because like you got you, you have a lot of percussion, obviously. Yeah, an incredible amount of percussion. It sounds like there's twelve percussionists in the room, and you got a lot of. Um, but then, like the main instrument is, is the is the organ, right? Like, which is which is so, very so you, creepy because it gives it this whole. Oh, the first chord is so creepy when it yeah. comes in. So that like that changes the yeah. vibe, right? Well, that's that's the first uh, indication for me that it was a European record, that it wasn't a Latin record, uh, because right. the, because the painting that you know the the painting palette here is is gray, it's uh, it's gray. So it's not happy. It's not it's, it's not happy. Usually, uh, Latin music has some joy in it. Yeah, this this was not that. That that <laughs> hurt a lot. Um, that first chord. That first chord was now so the first cool. the first track. The first uh, track on the record is a pretty long track. Well, the whole first side, yeah. it's 20, 20 minutes. 20 right? minutes of it. And uh, I, when I first heard it, again, it's the first time that I heard it, when I first heard it, um, you can tell where the different pieces are. Um, it was later when I was looking at the cover of it, which is a, an insane cover because, again, it doesn't Great look... Great cover, again. L- yeah, you have to have a cool album cover, and guys. Again, we talked about this not only Not only do you have a need to have a cool cover, fuck you for, not, for doing a cool cover with shitty music. This is the yeah. exact same situation. Um, delivered. Huge. Yeah, delivered huge. So Tone Float, that first. Wonderful. A side. It's, it's so folks, we, you, know, uh, you, know, you know what time it is. Do you, have, uh, do you have any standout moments from that first movement? Oh, well, to me, it, it, I was going to ask you, like, how you felt it. The track grew. I thought... You know? um, How'd you like that? Development? So what what was weird to me is I was expecting naively for things to just ramp up and ramp up and ramp up, right? It and it was a burn. very slow burn. It was it was extremely moody. It it definitely now that we know the people that are creating this music, it makes sense that these are people from the war having to walk through burning buildings. That sort of idea is in there, and. Um, I thought it was a really cool journey. I thought it was ballsy as fuck to do 1969 and do an an A-side that's 20 minutes long, but it's not strange for European composers, which both of them really are composers, you know? So I think it's time for the second uh, side. It's almost like you know, man. So uh, let's do it. You know what you're supposed to do, folks. Now, before we go, please. Don't don't wuss out and be like, oh, I don't know. I'm I'm just really stoned from the first one. No, no, no. We need to take a journey together, guys. Do it. Do it. We really we really need to take a journey. Exactly. So please smoke it, listen to the second side, and come back to us. All right, so we're back with the side B. No, that's not right. We're back with the B side of Tone Float Organization. Um your take. So did you did you like this one more, G, than side A or what? This one was definitely uh, much more fun than the first side. Um, there's a cool couple of songs, and um, I don't know. It, the mood changes completely on the B side of this. This is one of the main reasons why I like vinyl so much, right? The experience of, like, one side fully to the end, other side fully to the end. That's the whole point of Smoke and We Got em. Like, it's a journey, man, and this is this is a good one. My favorite track was uh, the first song on side uh, B. Milk what Rock. are the uh, What are the tracks on uh, on the B side? <clears throat> Milk Rock, Silver Forest, Rhythm Salad, and No As It in Agro. Yeah, that's the closer. 
So which one did you like the most? I like uh, two and to three um, a lot. Silver a Forest lot. and the Rhythm Salad? Sil- yeah, but, but, the, but the second half of Silver Forest into Rhythm Salad. Okay, nice. Um, yeah, I just it's really like uh, ecstatic, you know? Like there's just like this really uh, consistent um, – we were talking about drone yesterday. Yesterday, with uh, with when we reviewed that other album, um, this this is a rhythmic sort of pulsating thing that just kind of drives me through, and I really enjoyed it. Especially coming from these two dudes that go on to turn into craft work, you know, that's very uh, interesting. I like milk rock because it's like it does rock, you know, and yeah, and, yeah. and that and that first side, it's it's great. I love side A, but it doesn't really have that. There's rock no rock edge to it, right? So immediately yeah. you got like a repeating bass line, and you got like you got guitars. It's great. Yeah, it it really feels like you got to get down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you uh, did you like um, the uh, electric flute? The vocoded electric flute, by the way. Well, he was he was overblowing, right? Like oh. like uh, Rasan Roland, you know. It was Those guys. It, there was there was a lot of nasty shit happening that again very impressed by the two people that put this together, right? Because I wouldn't expect this sort of music. Like it doesn't sound. Well, there's three three other guys in the band. Yeah. Okay. Alfred Monix, he plays drums, bongos, maracas, cowbell, tambourine. You got and he Bl- obviously brought the drugs to the session. He plays bass, shaky tube, small bells, plastic hammer, percussion. And then Basil Hamoudi playing glockenspiel, conga gong, musical box, bongos, percussion, and vocals. Yeah. This is so, this is the reason why this side rocks so much harder than the A side. So you got those three guys too, right? So Yeah. Yeah. Who then obviously <laughs> got dropped and forgotten and Ralph well, and Florian lived in castles. Well, they 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 uh they went on to do some uh, very differently uh, sounding music, but for a brief moment in 1969, this record really rules. And like, uh, let's put it in context. Uh, what what are the other records that are coming out in 1969? Have you looked that up oh, at all? Well, well, there's lots of great shit in '69. Go ahead. Uh, you know, well, this is seventy again. I mean, it was recorded in sixty nine. Came out in seventy. Well, see, for for me, it counts when it was actually put down in the studio. So America is listening to Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, and on the other side of the world, this yeah. But there's cool. I mean, like even even in even in the mainstream, Jimi Hendrix, right? Like, there you it's go. Cool, right? Yeah, it still feels really far removed from Western music, though. Well, like, really, this, far this is the this is the interesting thing um, that I dig about the Germans. And the Krautrock thing is is that they really were not, they were they were not like aping blues music. No, they did not want to be that, right? Yeah. So they thought it was corny, mm-hmm. which um, over time they were definitely fucking right. They're correct. So yeah. It's it's especially now, like honestly, in twenty twenty, if you if you if you're honestly like, let's talk about this. If you're in a white blues band, you're basically like doing fucking blackface at this point. Like it's so it's so offensive to me at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, like, and it's it's unauthentic. It's a photo. So, that's what I'm of saying. It's so it's fucking so oh, so not not like a black person in the audience at all. No, 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 no. <laughs> right? No. Like compare that to uh, a BB King concert in 1960. Yeah. Or you know? or even or even Buddy Guy it's in 1999. Like, it's, like, it's just a different thing, man. I understand oh, the so, authenticity. It's so funny when, when we when we saw Buddy Guy. It wasn't even that long ago. It was probably uh, it was BB King's last two, tour, two thousand. No, no, it wasn't his last tour. Come on. Yeah, it was the last tour. No way. I I'm pretty damn sure, man. Nope. Well, we'll false news. We'll, this is false news, folks. We'll, we're we'll we're, we're going to research this and come we'll back fact tomorrow. Check and come back tomorrow. But, but the but the, the moral of the story was it's so funny you said that I, I completely forgot about that this was like a big arena this was like at the UCF yeah. arena in Orlando Florida and um, there was three there was four girls right in front of us yeah and we're like upper deck and right in and, front of the stage in the sweet spot yeah and they were like uh, th- three black girls and one white girl mm-hmm. 
and and they were like really into Buddy Guy's guitar playing, correct? Well, they were into two things: into Buddy Buddy Guy's guitar playing and the beer that they were drinking. Yeah, and um, always in life, you should know that. Like, if if there is four people, uh, and this is regardless of uh, actual uh, sex, like it could be guys and this, but this is just girls. But if there's three black people and one white person. The person you need to look at, out for is that one white person. They okay? they really go off. They get very comfortable they always, real fast. They always have to act up. Yeah. Right. Like um, and it's like basically like they're the, the mascot. They're like, this is my white friend Julie, right? It, Julie gets drunk. Yeah, but fool. but nobody so, courses Julie into it. Julie can't wait to tell everybody. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that's all Julie lives for. It. Julie, that's all Julie lives for. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Julie, like, Julie, Julie anyway. was seven beers deep, and it was the so opening set. The exact quote was, make it cream, buddy. Make yeah. it cream. There you go. And, uh, folks, this is not a girl that you want to say these words. No. No, this, <laughs> this is – she probably had about four or five children um, waiting for her back home. But that's not the five. point. <laughs> Anyways. That's not the point. Music. That's Back-to-music, music, folks. That's authenticity. Sorry. This record does Sorry. have authenticity. Yes. <laughs> and that's the point of that. Authenticity. Now, now um, the last thing that we promised uh, was that we were going to compare Sgt. Pepper's to uh, the first Velvet Underground album. Yeah, Shots Fired uh, moment of, of the podcast. We talked about this right. yesterday. So we're just going to go tr- track by track. Okay. And, and all you're going to tell me is Velvet's. Or Beatles, which track who, do you think is better? Who takes it? Okay, go ahead. I'm ready. Track you think is better. So, uh, we got Sgt. Pepper's Only Hard Cup Band, Sunday Morning. Which one do you like Sunday better? Morning. Okay. A uh, little help with my friends, or I'm waiting for the man. I'm waiting for the man. I love you, Ringo. Now, a little help from my friends. If it was the Joe Cocker version, I might give it to him. This okay? would be a different conversation, but that's not what we're talking about here. Don't confuse me. Keep going. Okay, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds or Femme Fatale? Femme Fatale. That one's not even close, folks. Yeah. It, it, it's going to get worse here. Uh, getting Better All the Time or Venus in First? Venus in First, please. <laughs> That's the question. So, <laughs> Fixing a Hole or Run, Run, Run? Run, 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 please. Uh, also, tomorrow, uh, I'm going to rile up, up the people even more. For the record, the guitar solo on Run, Run, Run is a cooler, more advanced... Uh, just taking it to a way different level than George Harrison ever did. And, okay? and and we both love George Harrison, but it doesn't compare. Well, I just said, how yeah. I described it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. it's true. Yeah. He never did nothing like that. Okay. Keep on going. She's leaving home all tomorrow's parties. It's, uh-huh. getting, worse. it's getting worse, folks. All tomorrow's parties. Benefit of Mr. Kite or heroin. Come on, heroin. Moving on. Yeah. <laughs> we, we're pitching the shed out, folks, so far. Yeah. There, so, ain't, okay. there, ain't, there ain't no fat to trim here. Uh, within you, without you versus there sh- she goes again. There she goes again. Uh, when I'm 64, I'll be your mirror. I'll be your mirror. Love to read a meter made, the Black Angels death song. Come on. Good morning, European sun. It's... When I'll you, give good morning. I'm going to give good morning. It, it might be. It, it's the only one that I would have to go halfway on, but I'm not completely sold on. on, on I'm going to. I'm You're going, going to. Oh, good for you. It still, it still cannot compete. Um, and then Sergeant Pepper's the the reprise comes back. So and there's no more songs, so you get that win for the Beatles. And then a day in the life, which is the to me. I'm going to say, like, that's the best song, like, by far on the album, right? Like, it's not even close for the yeah. Beatles. And I would give it a run for, like, the best song out of, of any on either album, although I'd probably go Venus and Furs. Yeah, it's also, it's also the one song that really expands the canon of production because you're talking about reverse sampling. I mean, it's, it's a full-blown Lennon project in a song. way, it's a great song. but it stands alone, you know? So when you're putting it up against, you know, if we're going blow by blow here, you know? Yeah, we just go track by track, folks, and and it, it was rough. It was a rough day for the Beatles. Yeah, so I can't wait to uh, keep uh, debunking these uh, these crazy stories about myths. These, yeah. these myths. Yeah, 
crazy story, crazy myth that really uh, keeps you outside of the cool stuff. So that's where you're here, and that's where we're here. Um, what's the deal with tomorrow? Are we well, we're not even discussing tomorrow until we're not discussing. They tomorrow show up until tomorrow. tomorrow. Comes, yeah. There you go. But it will be cool. All it's, right. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed uh, organization tone float. Hope you learned something, and we'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, folks.